Hey guys, this is Detox and I'm Levi Gates and with me today, Mr. Dan Williams of Optimum Polymer Technologies and Mr. Ivan LaCroix of Optimum Polymer Technologies. Welcome guys. Thank you. So today's topic is going to be something that a lot of guys get confused about, uh, but if you've been in the industry a long time, processes change. Yes. Uh, for those of us that have been in it longer, single stage versus clear. So. Uh, those of us that have been in it longer, single stage has been around a lot longer. Yes. But it's still in effect. There are still cars that are getting single stage paint jobs. Correct. Uh, repaints, things like that. Even Sometimes, brand new cars. Even brand new cars will get single stage paints. Even higher end cars will yeah. actually get single stage paints. And paint we actually jobs. have now candy paints with tinted clear coats. Yep. So that's another thing. Yeah. So. Uh, when we talk about single stage, yeah, everything is together. Basically, when we have a base coat, clear coat paint, we have the color in one layer, yep. and then they put a clear coat on top. When we have a single stage paint, the clear coat and the base coat are essentially mixed together. It's not quite that, right. but in a raw sense, that's what it is. So you have pigment all the way to the top of the paint, right. as opposed to having a clear layer between the two, or on top. The clear coat was developed, actually, Dr. Gaddusi had a hand in that, the, mm -hmm. uh, the owner and chief chemist of Optimum Polymer That's Technologies. That's right. He had a hand in developing clear coat. That's why our products work so well with it. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the clear coat acts as a UV barrier, first of all. It helps to keep the gloss longer than a single stage paint. Right. A single stage paint will oxidize visibly. Clear coat still oxidizes. You just don't see it. It just sort of dulls lightly. It's dulls not lightly. As, yeah. Whereas we've all seen a red car that's gone pink. Yes. In time. Uh, and that's single stage oxidizing. And what I, what I always did for customers, if they'd come in and they were like, oh, I don't know if this will buff out. I think it's single stage, but I'm not sure. I'd just lick my thumb a little bit yeah. and just rub the paint. And if the shine comes back to it and it's a really dull faded section and that shine comes back to that one little yeah. spot, yeah, we can buff it out. It's single stage paint. Or if you have a towel or something and you wipe that same, do that same trick yeah. and the color comes off on your towel, exactly. that's, that's one way you know. So especially yeah. with single stage when you're buffing. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and we get a lot of calls from detailers. The first time they ever do a single stage paint, they go, what's wrong? My pad turned red. Yeah. Oh, well, you're doing a red single stage. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So they they also have uh, some of the cheap paints that are um, integrated clear coats or single stage from yeah. you know like a, a low end shop. One of the worst experiences I had was uh, my buddy's uh, '66 Chrysler, which is the size of a battleship, um, <laughs> black. After about a year and a half, it just started like rainbows started coming up, and it looked like um, OptiCoat high spots all over <laughs> the top surfaces of the paint, and you you could not polish them out. I tried wow. to wet sand it, I tried rotary, I tried everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely, uh, it's one of the things we like, what we always liked when we get one. I, f I love working on single stage paint. I think it's easy, easy to turn around. You can, you can just bring it right back and it's the shine you can get out of it. It's pretty fun, especially to go from something that dull and make something super glossy. And would that uh, be a difference like with a, like a lacquer paint or, or, or a single stage paint or that, cheap integrated clear coat because I think yeah, that's what they actually call it. There's yeah. a lot of different grades of single stage paint. We had lacquer back in the 40s to the 70s, uh, early 70s. Then they had urethane based single stage paints and those are still available today. And then you have the integrated clear coat which is really, really a cheap it's yeah. like a hundred dollar yeah. Mako job. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. I was trying we to say any primer. Names, we but. got we got paint or not Mako, but one of those uh, discount. Hey, get your car painted yeah. for a buck fifty. Three ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It and it's all primer color. Uh, you, it, if you've worked on cars, you've seen it. It's a really bad. Paint. <laughs> yeah, it really is bad. Yeah. So if it, you're a detailer, don't. If somebody brings you a car and they got it painted at a really low quality or low end paint paint shop. Just pa pass that one by. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot you can do to it. I've had customers that pull up and go, well, I bought this car and it was repainted. Is there anything I can do? Because it's got some tree sap on it. No. It was, it was only 300 bucks. Go get it repainted. Yeah, we, I'm going to yeah, charge you more than that. going to charge you more to fix it, <laughs> literally. So single stage paints, uh, don't panic when you see your pad change colors. It's normal. Uh, and that's a difference uh, with the uh, hyper paint correction system. We always tell people to wash their pad after every panel. And single stage paint 
very much illustrates why yeah. we tell people to do that. Because if you're working with clear coat, you get as much transfer on yeah, your it, pad. You're technically as dirty as single stage. Like it's right. exfoliating. Yeah. Yeah. It's just you don't see it because, because it's clear. Yep. So your pad gets as gummed up, it gets as trans as much transfer on it as you do with a single stage. Yeah. But you don't see it. And a lot of guys never thought of that, never realized it. No, exactly. I, I remember I had guys that would always complain about that and they were like, oh, I hate working on it. We get an old truck that showed up in single stage. Like I hate working on it. It makes such a mess. And I was like, it makes the same mess <laughs> as a clear coated car. It's just you're seeing color now. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like those videos when they show people coughing and they're like, if you could see your germs. Like, yeah. That's, <laughs> no. It's basically, yeah. it's, you, you know, everything's stained red. The shirts are yeah, stained exactly. red. They're, yeah. yeah. So Another thing with uh, the new tri-stage or three-coat, tri-coat paints. Uh, there's two types of tri-coat paints. Cadillacs in the early mm -hmm. 2000s had the, the pearlescent tri-coats. Right. And that was a solid base coat then they put on a pearlescent mid coat and then they put on a clear coat so those were correcting just like we do a normal clear right. coat ford in the last couple of years has a, two colors in their lineup that are tinted clear yeah. one is their ruby red and the Which other is one is a gorgeous their, color yeah that's the that's color, color of my, your mustang yeah my car is that color and the other one is a, a vibrant blue that i think it's only on the the F-150 and the uh, Focus RS, um, but it's a very bright, vibrant blue. As soon as you start polishing on it, your pad becomes that color. And it's like the old candy paint jobs that we had on hot rods in the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. which means it's a metallic base coat and a tinted clear coat. And the clear coat is tinted red. Yeah. Those you have to be very careful when you do paint correction on, because as you're polishing them, you're actually removing that tinted clear. As you're removing that tinted clear, it becomes lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. <laughs> and you can make a scratch correction this big turn into something this yeah. big. Yeah, and when you turn it into something that big, you now have, like my car is the, the ruby red. Uh, I've seen cars come into our shop that had been polished somewhere else, and that's exactly what they did. They tried to polish out a scratch, and now they had a pink spot <laughs> mm. <laughs> because they took too much. Too, too much clear coat off. They're basically wearing that color off and getting down to the metallic base coat. Wow. So the only way to correct that is to repaint. Yeah. So those cars are very, very difficult to work with. And so. also, um, the uh, the European cars a few like ten years ago maybe uh, came out with that ceramic clear coat. Yes. Where they had like uh, silicon dioxide infused into the clear coat. Another itself. thing that Dr. G helped bring right. forth. <laughs> and basically those clear coats they had silicon dioxide mixed in to the the clear coat. As it's curing, the silicon dioxide rises to the surface of the clear. If you go through that layer of silicon dioxide, you end up with really, really soft paint or a soft clear coat in that case. But boy, until you get there, yeah, that is hard, I, hard I, rock. a black um, Porsche uh, Cayenne. Yeah. <laughs> But it, was, it was like polishing a diamond. It, it was yeah. like a, to get any correction out of it. Right. Yeah. Of course, that was years ago when I was running my buffer really high because didn't have it all in there yet. Yeah. Those paints, you have to be careful when you're correcting not to remove too much material because when you do, you get to that soft underlayer, then it's game over. Yeah. Well, and, a, and a, if you haven't yet, invest in like a paint thickness gauge and learn about it. Utilize it, especially if you get some old cars that come in. Yeah. That was one thing that we did, we used to do a ton of old cars that would come up. Right. For some reason, we got a lot of people liked us because we could revive some of these old paints and yeah. and they, they really enjoyed it so we got a bunch of them but you never know how much paint is actually on the surface so and the scary thing with single stages sometimes there's not much left especially if it's an original paint or it's an old paint yeah um, so we would go and make sure we could measure and know well, what was allowable what we could do if we couldn't cut this spot out we were just going to do a quick light polish on it just to brighten it yeah um, and there were times we had cars we had a 55 Oldsmobile that uh, um, it had had a like a seafoam green paint, yeah. but it didn't have very much left on the tops no. of the tops of the headlights, and so we had to make sure we were very gentle. We didn't want to burn through and right and because uh, with single stage, once you burn through that paint, it's still shiny, 
but the black patina or or under the primer coat that's underneath will also shine. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That. So it looks kind of cool, but your customer may not like not it. Not necessarily what the customer <laughs> yeah, might I be after. I think it looks neat. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so invest in a small, you know, and they, you can get them priced all the way up to the high end if you want. Uh, we found one on Amazon that worked really well for us. Yeah, you can get them you know, around two, three hundred dollars. Yep. They're accurate, uh, they work well, and it gives you an average for an area. Yeah. You know, they're not gonna pinpoint every little no, inch for no. you, so. It's a, it's it gives a great you an idea. sales tool also. Yeah. I mean, you look, you look pretty good well, if you're like you know getting ready doing an estimate on somebody's car and you're like well your paint is this thick and a lot of places wouldn't yeah. do that so, well right. we had one customer that appreciated that he had bought a car an old uh, it was a 54 lincoln capri convertible and he got it it had been sitting for 10 years in a shed and he was like i'm pretty sure that's he goes this is new paint and we looked at it, we're like yeah it's new paint because they poorly masked it off and there yeah. was paint everywhere <laughs> that we were going to remove but he wanted to know he's like i just don't know know if it's how thick it is I don't know how nice it is and we were able to go through and yeah. and go you got plenty of paint right yeah. usually repaints are like that they're yeah five times well now five yeah. three times thicker than a, a factory clear yeah but he was happy paint. because he was really worried that he was going to have to because we yeah, yeah and we could go well we can wet sand this or we can cut this we can get this part out we can and so once he knew there was a lot of paint to work with he was happy he was comfortable and he was totally fine to let us go through it and have some yeah. fun with it and at the same time we had another gal who stopped in and said I heard you can do this. I want to have my car looked at, and it was an old, it was an old Monte Carlo, like a '78. Yeah. It's not not worth a lot, but she was like, my ex-husband said he put ten coats of clear on it, and he painted it. Yeah. And I don't believe him. And I was like, <laughs> when was it painted? And she said, back in like 1998. And I was like, all right. And we got it, and we looked at it, and I was like, that's pretty nice clear to be that old. And yeah. sure enough, we put our paint thickness gauge on, and it was just skyrocketed we're like there's a lot of clear we're yeah. gonna, we can go swimming in that yeah. like we're gonna have some fun so is there a limit when you're painting a car to how much clear coat you can actually put on there because it seems like the more that you put on the more you have to work with yeah it, eventually it will get too thick and it will start cracking and there are a lot of different formulations of clear coat you can buy a really cheap clear coat you can buy a very expensive clear coat you can buy clear coats that have a very quick setup time you have clear coats that demand multiple layers. Uh, you have clear coats that are designed for show cars that they know that they're going to be putting five, six, eight layers on wet sanding and doing all that. There are some that they're one shot and go. So uh, there's a lot of variables from the paint industry as to what you're wanting. So if you're having a car repainted and you know you want a show car quality finish, well make sure that the clear coat they're putting on it is matching what you're wanting to do with yeah. the vehicle. Uh, and you can get the ceramic clear coats in the aftermarket. You can get very hard clear coats. You can get soft clear coats. You can get all sorts of clear coats that need baking, clear coats that don't need to be baked. Um, and sometimes on a classic car, you don't necessarily want it being baked if you're not taking the interior out mm -hmm. uh, because that high heat isn't always good. Well, how, when they do that, how, how hot is it in there? Do, is it just it's IR adjustable. lamps or no, it's, it's like temperature when they uh, Some of them are IR lamps, some of them are actually a, a heater. propane yeah. furnace uh, or natural gas furnace that heats. So I think I've never actually stepped inside of a paint booth like that. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I've seen yeah. them. <laughs> and now with the water-based paints, they're doing, um, the water base doesn't require heat to cure. It just requires air movement. Mm. So now in the, the the newer paint booths, they have actual fans in the paint booth in the corners that just circulate the air. So, but the clear coat is still solvent based. Mm. So yeah, and mm. one thing that I liked uh, with single stage was once we corrected it and got it back to nice glossy shine. Yeah, we'd end up using gloss coat because it worked really well yes. uh, to seal the uh, the single stage gel, prevent any more oxidation. Yeah. And our customers really enjoyed that and it, it was economical for us and yeah. and a good price point for them and they, they, they liked that they didn't have to worry about it oxidizing exactly. faster. I, I had that same situation uh, five, six years ago, a guy with a 56 Ford, it was right before SEMA and he wanted to sell it and I went and I polished it and I waxed it and it started turning hazy again or foggy after like only two or three days. So I went back and I polished it again and put wax on it again. It did it again. I went back the third time and I put um, my OptiCoat on it actually. And um, 
he sold it about two months later, but at that two months, it, it stayed, it held the color, it didn't turn yeah. back. Yeah. Well, I hope we answered enough questions for you guys. Uh, if you have any more, email me at levi at theragcompany.com or you can comment below. Make sure you subscribe to uh, the Optimum Synergy podcast. You can subscribe right here to our detox or you can subscribe to the Synergy podcast over here on the left. How do you guys get that stuff to float up there? <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> Dane's a magician. Yeah. Again, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Ivan, for coming on. And uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to watch more videos right here at the Rag Company YouTube channel.